Walker. Just as a tree has roots, bark, sap, branches, leaves, flowers, fruit, and seven kinds in all, so, the, so does the Torah. Has literal meaning, homiletical meaning, the mystery of wisdom, numerical values, the grammatica is very key here, hidden mysteries, still deeper mysteries, the laws of fit and unfit, forbidden and permitted, clean and unclean. So there is a whole bunch here, okay, and they will admit it. So you can't, it's just not a one size fits all. It, you, you can't just be a Baptist all your life, even though that's great. If you're going to, um, I have all these, I'm on the cut and paste queen because I have so many little, because what it comes down to is th this whole idea of what I'm trying to, you need to get wisdom and understanding. It is in the writings. It's in the sum total of his words. The, uh, they call it in a lot of times in the, in the Hebrew, dat, D-A apostrophe A-T, which means knowledge. But this, and it, when it talks about in Revelation, because I've said this before, Revelation, they say over sod or hidden mystery. There's no way a Gentile Christian is going to figure that book out. That's why we're all over the map. <laughs> um, the forehead in, in the man, you know, you put it, it represents the mind, the crown, the key to the head, and on its two sides. And this is the Godhead. See, I can't go into this. I think I will. I'm going to, wish I could do this full time, whatever. Unpack the whole Godhead. Um, but if you, in that is two parts, the, on the left side and the right side, Bina, which means understanding, and Hokma, which means wisdom. It's wisdom and understanding, two sides of the same coin kind of thing. Uh, you have to get, he says, get wisdom, get understanding, and it is the hidden aspect of God known as the crown. And, you know, you read the Desi schools, they're constantly talking about the crown and the Catherine and all these kind of things. So just to give you an idea now, I'll go into some more, and this is esoteric understanding. I mean, there's a lot of words to describe this. Because I wanted to, I wanted to uh, end on one point in particular because I got sort of, this was sort of a breakthrough. Again, another thing, Genesis, uh, I've said this before, is such a meaty little book. I mean, it's six chapters, but it is so apocryphal. It is so full of these parabolic, allegorical encrypted understandings that unless you know all the backdrop, you know, what the words mean, what they're representing, because Genesis was written to the choir. You understand? It, 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 it was written to the choir. Moses wrote it, which he didn't really write it. He was a sort of like an editor, you know, kind of synthesizing what had already come down through Adam and Enoch and synthesizing it. And God was doing a new thing now with it, calling forth a nation. I mean, just so many levels of this thing. But um, there are two beginnings in Genesis. When you read it really closely, and people who really do read it closely, and then ask these questions, this is what I guess I would say. And the email took mine says, I don't know, it's not really there. Don't, 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 don't get all fussy about stuff, you know? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I mean, isn't that good enough for you? <laughs> well, no, inquiring minds need a little bit more. But this is... To the Hebraic mind, which now I'm trying to tell you, Gentile Christian, you need to get this mind. You need to get this mind of Kabbalah. You need to get this esoteric understanding. Because, you know, science, true science, will prove the Bible. The Bible, in its, is the most scientific language. And we can crack their language. As I said, the ancients were so brilliant, brilliant people. But this whole idea of evolution versus creationism, which is a great divide today. I mean, they say the countries, I mean, think about 47 and 44 percent split. Some believe in creation, some believe in evolution. I mean, and, you know, but we're going to get into that in a minute. I want to give you a couple of um, kind of more deeper, all right, understandings that would be coming, you could, able, that, you know, by knowing Kabbalah, by understanding some of the mysteries, by reading the sages, understanding what they're talking about. Because Paul makes it very clear. He says, look, if it wasn't for the Jews 
who kept the writings and the Torah and the law and the covenants and the promises, we wouldn't have any of this, okay? Because the, 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 the prodigal son, the northern kingdom, just went out into the Gentiles and became, you know, was dispersed and became Gentiles. And they didn't really, even though some of their writings, there's some very esoteric works that there was kept in the groups that is very interesting and coming back to us with a new spin. But all that being said, here is where you have to understand the... Um, because what it comes down to, what I was unpacking, I'll just say this flat out, by the two trees in the garden. Man is um, biologically, chemically, electrically, and I don't know, like kind of components, electrical, chemical, biological, and circulatory, something, all the different systems corresponding to the four elements. The, the, um, the design, you know, the most amazing pro, uh, program or uh, machine or whatever you want to call it in the spirit of God, in all of the creation. Unfortunately, we're stuck in this flesh body that dies, so we have a problem. Um, and that's part of the whole story of salvation and Messiah, but that's a different thing. But um, in the garden, what you basically had was a total genetic infiltration. Eve and the serpent, who was not a snake, and there's nothing to do with the little slithery thing, that became a much watered-down, parabolic word that was used, but he was in the, he, an akash, which is a race. What's really interesting coming out is all these things are very humanoid. Okay, this is another whole teaching for people who are really on the page, but uh, the sons of God seem to be all very humanoid in their makeup, like a tree. So it's probably like a tree. It has, you know, like limbs, arms, torso, trunk, uh, the mind, the head, which is sort of like the branches, because the mind is just uh, huge. The programs that the mind is capable of is just huge. But Eve was even a Nakash, which is another race of created being, uh, had carnal relations, uh, and produced Cain, an offspring, became the Cainites. Cain's father, in other words, was Samuel, an angel, another race, the sons of God, another race that God had created, but they had, this is the first hybrid. If you want to understand in Genesis, everything was supposed to reproduce after its kind. What most people, and this is what I have to say, well, you have to know the deeper mysteries and want to pursue, because if you stay in the carnal plane, see, there's different planes to this thing levels. You know, the natural man just wants to stick in the plane of things where he can, you know, if I can taste it, touch it, see it, hear it, and smell it, it's real, I'll believe in it, but anything outside of that ain't going to go there. Well, you know, oh well, I'm sorry. You can't see your soul, but you got, I mean, okay, there is, there are realms that you can't see, but we can see their fruit. This is why we know, and this is why Jesus said, you know, the whole, everybody's going to be without excuse about being God because of the creation. You, you just... So this race um, called Canaanites, or became like the Kenites, was a problem race because they had genetics, half of Eve, of Adam, of Adamic, of made in the image of God, and then they had half of the fallen cherubim. Okay, now this is the truth. This is what bottom line, when you get in the bottom of all this, is what we're talking about. This explains the evil inclination. So I'm going to give you a whole bunch of words to describe the same thing. How um, the prophets, and this is one of the, the strategies they used, okay? And why, you know, and one thing I'm going to have to unpack, and it's not going to be politically correct or so, whatever, is this whole concept of Goyim, the Goy, the nations, the Gentiles, the mixed multitude. We're just going to have to tackle that. And we'll hopefully, if people get the revelation of the nations, the mixed multitude, and they understand what Yeshua did and what it meant, which they got, that's why the good news of the salvation, why this little Jewish sect religion would take off like rocket fire over the whole earth, because it had a message in it. Oh my gosh, in fact, I want to cry, because we just don't understand and we need to. We're at a season, Christian, grow up into Christ and handle hard sayings, okay? 
if we understood what God was offering on so many levels, because as I told you, there are mysteries, hidden mysteries. There's there's homiletics. There is okay, and I'm going to end with this, and I got twenty. I'm going to end with this. There is the grammatica, the the the, the number games. Oh my gosh, God is so past funny. He's brilliant. I can't even do the number thing. That really crunches me. We all thought September was going to be a number thing. If <laughs> that's not a, so, that all I got to say about September is that either either we are so. We better be on our God 100% more than we could have been that infiltrated or we just have a lot more to learn and we just need to hunker down and, you know, we're not quite there. But, and probably a little bit of both. But either way, oh, I get so, but I wanted to, you to understand this, that iniquity, the original sin, iniquity equals, and this is all tautology, which I told you was where the first half equals the second half. The first Mind picture, group of words, whatever concept equals the second. That's how they communicated, and that's how you could keep things in context and you could keep going along. All right? So, this is some of the things. Now, the evil inclination is another way of talking about it. And so, that's in us. That's got infiltrated. Our genetics are all mixed up, people. All mixed up. Uh, body, soul, and spirit. See, because, uh, you know, Satan was in the Nakash. It's, it's a mess. But anyways, the Holy One, blessed be he, called it. Now we're going to talk about this on. These are different ways of the evil inclination or iniquity, which was the original sin uh, with Adam and Eve and what caused the big problem. Uh, I'm going to give you a bunch of ways it's called in the scriptures. All right, we're going to go fast. The Holy One, blessed be he, called it evil. You can call it flat out evil. Uh, Moses called it uncircumcised, of the uncircumcised. Um... David called it unclean. And he said, create in me a clean heart. Look at it all unclean in me. Um, Solomon called it the enemy. Okay? Uh, Isaiah called it the stumbling block. Ezekiel called it the heart of stone. Uh, it has to be cut out of your heart. He will take the heart of stone um, and he will give you a heart of flesh. Uh, Joel called it the hidden one. It is called Am Amalek, it's another name, first among the nations. It's called Canaanite or Kenites following that bloodline. Finally, this is the whole concept of original sin. It is called iniquity, and it comes from this problem we had in the garden. Okay, I hope that helps you a little bit. So you got to understand. Now, this is another one about the tabernacle. Uh, you know, and see, this gets into the law so much. If we understood the times and the seasons of God, why Jesus was, you know, there is no more temple today. The third temple he's building is the temple of what God, what he's going to have, which is of the elect today. Those that have oil in their lamp, the bride, which is, but, um, oh, I had another thing. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, means that the lower world was created after the pattern of the upper world. Now, the tabernacle, because see, a lot of Christians, what the heck are they doing? All these different offerings and sacrifices and, you know, burnt offerings and ashes of a heifer. I mean, it's like, what in the world? Well, get yourself educated. This is the most beautiful imagery because he talks to us below in types and images. Now the tabernacle below was likewise made after the pattern of the supernal, which means the heavenlies or the celestial tabernacle in all its details. For the tabernacle in all its works embraced all the works and achievements of the upper world and the lower, whereby the Shekinah was made to abide in the world. Oh, the Shekinah is the Holy Spirit. It's feminine. Remember, God made everything in his image, male and female. The Godhead is a male and female. Oh my gosh, we could just so much here, people. Similarly, the lower paradise is made after the pattern of the upper. We said that, and the latter contains all the varieties and all the varieties of forms and images to be found in the world. That's why it's called a garden. Look at all the beautiful flowers and shapes and things that grow in a garden, okay? For whoever then looked at the tabernacle in all of its utensils and everything was made and all of its patterns of worship, everything saw in it an epitome of the upper world and the lower. For all the works of the universe were contained in the equipment of the tabernacle. I mean, that's the level of, that God gave to Moses when they made things after the pattern. And it tells about that the guy who actually made the stuff, I can't remember what his name is, had actually in this area had more wisdom and knowledge, Bina and 
Hokma, revelation, than, than Moses did. And Moses bowed to him. Moses acquiesced to him because God, he saw that God was giving him the wisdom of this. This is amazing. See, there's so much in this. It's not just a bunch of clangy pots and pans. And Okay, so done with that. I have to go to this. And if I can do this one, I'll come back. So anyways, there's this whole thing about evolution versus creationism. And I found this because I have, you see, when you read Genesis, you will see there are these two creation stories. And there's two creations. Of it. What's going on? All right. Um, when did the beginning take place? See, and this is when from a Kabbalistic understanding, from the mystical, from the sages, this is their understanding. This is their information that they have been carried down. And this is really kind of interesting. Because we could save ourselves so much. We could win a few wars, maybe, if we would, Gentile, Christian, get yourself grafted back into the root and understand the wisdom of your, your fathers, your patriarchs, your sages, okay? Now, there are two beginnings in the book of Genesis. There is the beginning of the universe, which is contained in the six days of creation. And then there's the creation of Adam. There's two separate things going on here. First of all, people understand this. There are two types. There's the visible and the invisible, okay? The invisible world, the world above, okay? The upper world. That was made first in the six days. This is, now I'm, um, and this is what's, I should get through this whole point. Versus you have here creationism. Oh, no, we just got 6,000 years of Adam and his generations and everything was made in six days, literal days. Well, the problem is <laughs> both of them are missing huge, or like in, in talk about a gap theory. <laughs> both of them are missing huge barrels of understanding, okay? Evolution is not necessarily a bad thing, and this is my opinion. This is why you understand Kabbalah, and this is why some of the most brilliant minds and they've done studies of this, I will tell you this. Most of the, the Nobel laureates and the great scientists and physicists, they're Jewish because they have a mind for this stuff. Physicists and the astrophysicists and some of the greatest breakthroughs. These people have come from a tradition, which is our tradition, if we would get it, um, that allow that is big. Okay? All right, so the two beginnings. The t the, with the formation of the soul, Adam was made on the sixth day. That's a whole separate entity. When you start counting the, the genealogies that start with Adam, that's exactly what you're doing. Adam, the sixth day Adam, and we're not even talking about the first Adam, because if you read, really, there's a first Adam, and Jesus was the second Adam, and what, so what was that? Okay, the six days, on the sixth day, the very last thing God created was this Adam. Those 6,000 years, we're tracking. That Adam is the story, what I got to, where, where we had a problem in the garden uh, with these Kenites, with the Nakash, okay? That's what we're tracking. That's one whole huge piece of the story, okay? And that is happening really more in the flesh, in the container, because I've told you before, in dualism, you have... The container, our bodies, our tabernacles, our tents, this earthen vessel, whatever, that contains our spirit soul, okay? So you have two programs that are running, okay? They're like computer programs. They're coming out of one mainframe, God, and he's running two, and you two programs at the same time. That's exactly what's going on. But everything that he needed... That he, in, in the first six days of creation, he was making all the invisible things. They were in, they're in, in, I don't even think they're not really invisible. Hmm. All right, I got to have to, because what I want to get down to is the math in this thing. How, um, how six days of creation can equal, according to the Jewish state, six billion years. Now, they say the world today is precisely 15, year, 15 billion years old. Because, see, today it's out of the box. And I only tell you this, Christian, because, oh my gosh. The, the deception that Satan is about to foist on the world, where it says everyone will believe, is, is, is mind-boggling. I mean, he, he, it, it's, if you do not have oil in your lamp, you, you just won't be able to, to stand against it, okay? So I'm telling you this so you can, according to the Babylonian Talmud, 6,000 years shall the world exist. Now, in 1,000, the seventh, it shall be desolate. Now, ancient and medieval Kabbalists, such as, I won't even say their names, understood, see, because God makes typology, we had six days of a creation, 
And then on the seventh day, on the sixth day, he made Adam, he also made fish and be, or he made the cattle and the birds. And I, oh, I wish I had my list. He made four things, five things with Adam on the sixth day. He made two of them on the uh, fifth day. Okay, and this is very important, but I won't digress into that. Now, according to the Master Kabbalist, Rabbi Ozzik, Isaac of Echo, when counting the years of these cycles, one must use an ordin will it must not use an ordinary physical year. This is the whole thing of the grammatica and understanding when you get into the Hebrew and each letter and the deep, deep significance of the letters. Because see what I believe evolution is true to a certain extent, but it is by divine blueprint. It's not like there's no God up there. I mean, he just sent forth this in unbelievable uh and time, it also is relative, okay? Because they say when you get out there, when, when your time is not governed by our 24-hour moon and sun thing, who knows what makes time relative, okay? Because our time is relative to our 24-hour day, okay? So when you start with Adam, if you try to sum everything, Adam, you're sticking with the genealogies, which are 6,000 years, which is strictly only referring to the genealogies of Adam and Eve that created this planet. But there's a whole backdrop. There was whole six days of stuff going on. And according to the sages, when what... When counting the years of these cycles, one must not use an ordinary physical year, but rather a divine year. The Midrash says that each divine day is a thousand years, based on the verse, see, a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. That's why Adam within, died within a day, because it's a thousand years, so he died before it was a thousand years. So, a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday. Since each year contains 360 days of a, di a divine year, would be 365 and 250 years long. According to this, each cycle of 7,000 divine years would consist of, oh my gosh, I think it's trillion, 2 trillion, 556,750,000, zero, earthly years. This figure is of 2.5 billion years. This figure of 2.5 years, Two and a half billion years is very close to the scientific estimate to the, as to the length of time that life has existed on Earth, and I will also say on in realms, okay? Because there's a difference between when an invisible produces a fruit, which is it's visible, okay? Because you have to understand, you go from... All the workings of things that are behind the scene, a tree with its roots, it's growing, and then all of a sudden, boom, pops out something, okay, that is visible. Okay, that's the whole concept. So this is where we get into principalities and thrones and dominions, and I've been over all this. All the huge primordial elements, the firstborns, the seraphims, the cherubims, all these things. This is the world in the six days that God was creating was this whole thing. This, this was like when he spoke, like, and it, it fits with the Big Bang. Everything, it just went out and went just divine dance. It just went and was doing its thing. It was making and creating and making and just, okay, until it got down to this final day, final cycle of the Adamic man, okay? If we assume that the seventh cycle began with the biblical kind of creation, then this would have occurred when the universe was about 15 billion, I guess, years old. This is very close to the scientific estimate that the expansion of the universe began some 15 billion years ago. See, this is a concept that how could a rabbi of the, 19th, of the 13th century have so accurately calculated the age of the universe using only the scriptures and Jewish traditions is astounding. Well, why should it be? See, when you understand what's coming, he's getting this information from Adam, who was there in the garden. He's getting it from Enoch. Enoch was, you know, so was taken up and shown all the calculations and even of the sun and the moon and beyond. So this understanding, this Kabbalah, this, this, this understanding was kept and they could do this. But what I want to say is we wouldn't have this whole thing because the evolutionists want to, want to tell us how the thing evolved, but without God at the top. And this is what the Jewish, no, no, there is the most high God. It is not evolution by random design. It's evolution by absolute divine blueprint. You know, those DNA codes that are going out are just, and they say in one cell, 
is like a city, is like the greatest, most, most airtight manufacturing city on the planet. It's incredible. But, and then creationism is trying to track, you know, the 6,000 years. You're just talking, your apples and oranges are trying to be the same fruit, and you can't do that. So this is where understanding the deep Kabbalistic mind that understands the invisible realm and its whole makeup and origin. And because now they are saying that, the, you know, the Big Bang, they are saying they used to say the world existed forever. No, it had a beginning. And believe me, it's going to have an end. So on that note, because it's done, I, I did want to end with that. I am going to get back to the trees because you can really only stand the, the significance of trees. There were two trees in the garden. Choose the tree of life, which, which, which is Yahushua, Hamashiach, which is Jesus the Christ. He is the Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is perfect love, and he's just standing with open arms. He will fill you with such knowledge and revelation. He will heal you. He will, he will, he will set you on high and give you beauty for ashes. So on that note, I say good night and shalom.